What's going on guys, it is Murdering here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Now as you can probably notice in the top left hand corner of your screen, you will see a clan mate of mine. I am using his account for this video because unfortunately I haven't pulled Saito yet. I've been free to play for a little over a month now, since there's not really a lot for me to do in the game. So luckily my clan mate Kalari was nice enough to let me use his account to showcase this monster of a champion, pretty much master of everywhere. I'm excited to show you that here today. We tested him everywhere. Now the only thing is my friend Kalari here is actually extremely free to play. So the gear quality is going to be a little bit different than you would normally expect from my account. It's still pretty good. As we can see here, we do have a Sifi with relatively good gear. She has 379 speed, 359 resistance with that, so he can definitely do some pretty decent work. But as far as Saito goes in the damage gear, it's pretty free to play quality wise. So just to show you what we're working with before we go over his kit and start with it, we have 4,700 attack, 225 speed, 266% crit damage, and the rest of the stats don't matter that much. We are using four pieces of cruel, two pieces of crit rate, crit rate being a set I would never use in my account, but I won't dwell on that point too much. Let's get straight into this kit, what this champion actually does. Attacks one enemy two times, has a 50% chance of placing decreased defense. For two turns, if it does apply that debuff, he will get an extra hit. So there is some benefit there as far as War Master goes with being able to proc it twice. Moving on to the A2, before attacking the enemy, places increased attack and increased crit damage on the champion. For two turns, if this champion's defense is higher than the target's defense, decreases the cooldown of this skill by one turn if the target has more than 50% HP after the attack. Moving on to his A3 attacks one enemy, then attacks all enemies except the initial target. There are three or more enemies alive, inflicts 20% more damage on the first hit if the target has a higher max HP than this champion. Moving on to his passive will ignore 7.5% of the enemy's defense for each time this champion attacks the same target. In consecutive attacks or turns stacking up to 30% ignore which is definitely really cool. The stacks will be lost if it changes targets and attacks the different enemy so that is something to keep in mind as well. So he has a lot going for him as far as an aura increases attack by 30% in all dungeons. So the first place we are actually going to use Saito is going to be in a dragon 20 run just to kind of get a feel for how much damage this champion can actually do. So let's go ahead and start this off. With this team here, let's take this off auto just to make sure the right champions are going first. Okay, Draco's defense down and weaken. So Bad Owl isn't going to have a chance to go and give him that increased damage. So what we're going to do is we're going to burn an A1 here. Doing 36, 27, and 24. Now we're going to boost his damage here. Let's go for... We'll just use an A1 from Longbeard cycle through making sure Saito gets to use his AoE because that's really what I want to focus on here. We'll burn an A1 on this guy. Now let's use this A3 ability which is an AoE and see how much damage we end up doing. We will use this on Horden. So 290 to 155 we weren't able to kill the apothecary here. So let's pretty much go next, see what we can do against the next wave. Hopefully all of the cooldowns did in fact reset. Okay, so he got stunned. You hate to see it. That's actually exactly what we didn't want to happen here. And we don't want these debuffs running off these champions here. We have a counterattack, 33,000 each, not bad. What we really want to see is... Saito's A2, I believe. Yes, correct. All right, so let's see what Saito's A2 is going to do against. Let's use, you know, we'll go against the Apothecary. 262,000 damage. That was really cool to see. Now we're going to get to the dragon. I'll hope, I was kind of hoping that he wouldn't use that there. Let's see how much damage we can actually do against this dragon 20 boss. Once all of the proper debuffs are on. 
So we're looking for that poison to be applied. That was the A2, 262,000. Without attack up and without battles, damage increase. That should have been the A3 there at 215,000. There's the A1 with the highest being 67,000, so it's pretty good for a triple hit. There's that A2, 245,000. And finally, 397,000 damage from that final attack there. Looking at the recap here, we have 2.1 million damage from Saito. Compares to everyone else who didn't even come close with the damage they dealt. So he's a monster. He can do a ton of damage. Obviously, this one wasn't the fastest because I was kind of cycling through just to showcase this. But this guy hits really hard and he's a really cool champion. Whether you're progressing through, probably not a speed farmer. Although if you're just looking to have fun, you want to use a cool champion. The character model looks really good. His animations look really cool. So that's definitely something worth considering there. So now that we went over dungeons, what we're going to do next is we're actually going to take him into Platinum Arena. Now currently, now Kalari is a very good arena player. He's currently ranked 11 at the moment. So let's see what we can do. We'll hit refresh to get a new list. And we're gonna see who we can find here and what we can play around with. So the only problems we're really going to run into is he's not built for arena right now. So he's not going to be speed tuned to this team. So let's try to go against the speed team here. We'll throw an Arbiter, Sifi, and we're gonna see what his A3 ability, which attacks one target and then attacks all enemies after that. Granted, there's four, which is perfect for Arena. So let's see how we can do here and if the speed tune is going to be a huge issue or not an issue at all. Start with Sifi. I'm pretty sure we can throw this on auto, but just to be safe while we're doing this, let's keep this on manual so obviously we're going to get cut off like i mentioned before and now let's use this a3 and see how much damage we can actually do here so 197 94 to whatever damage lots of damage from this guy he can definitely one shot an entire team and as we can see this does work in platinum as well what i want to do is now let's fight a team that's more resistance based and see how we can do against tankier teams. We're going to fight this team here. It does have a Rhodos, which definitely isn't beneficial for someone using a Saito. Okay, so now we're going to try to strip the debuffs here. Did well there. Now Rhodos is definitely going to counterattack. The key here is going to be, can we kill Sifi? Okay, we were able to kill Sifi. We couldn't quite kill Krisk there, which was unfortunate. However, it looks like we're still doing fine as of now. And we don't want Krisk to get a turn. So we'll do that. Let's reduce his turn meter. Let's be safe and bring up Shamrock here. Okay, we did not want that to happen, so let's go for the triple hit, a double hit rather. Now what Shamrock's going to do is, revive on death, is probably not going to proc on anybody. We're going to use his A2 for now. He will get that extra turn, which is fine, as long as he doesn't kill anyone significant on the team. Put him to, okay, he resisted that. Use another A1 here, and hopefully this is enough to kill Rotos. All right, perfect. So there was a perfect example of going against kind of a tank team, using Saito to see if he can compete. Now, obviously, if we were going to gear him for Arena, he would more likely than not have Savage gear on, so he's actually dealing a significant amount of damage to these teams here. As we saw, I'm wearing cool gear and a critical rate gear set, so not ideal for arena definitely good for something like dungeons and clan boss mostly for an unkillable and clan boss but we worked with what we had available to us now let's go against another speed team because honestly it's a ton of fun using saito in this kind of scenario here 
And let's see if this will actually work on auto or if we get cut in on. And we probably will because this Cethalia does look like she's rather quick. Yes, we are gonna get cut in. And we're gonna get provoked as well. Hopefully Trunna doesn't one-shot the entire team. Okay, so we didn't get one shot, which is good. We really just need Saito to get one turn, so the strategy is probably going to be take away. So Trunda's going to kill Saito, and we cannot sleep Trunda. Let's not risk the true fear. Let's turn meter boost to try to make Saito go next. Perfect. Now let's use this A3 without defense down to see how much damage we can do here. Okay, so Trunda is in fact in a swift parry set. So Saito is going to fall there. Luckily, we didn't die, which was, was very close for that to happen. We reduced the turn meter. Let's go ahead and kill Trunda. And hopefully we can survive this Tormund. It looks like we are going to. We're probably not going to lap him. Okay, we didn't get frozen, so we did get very lucky. We're not going to risk anything here. So let's double turn meter boost the entire team. Let's A1 here. And this should be game set match. Perfect. 61,000 to close everything out. So that was a ton of fun. Once again, Saito has a really unique kit, and he definitely does a crazy amount of damage. Now, obviously, Saito isn't a Void Affinity champion, so going against any team that does have a Force Affinity or Red Affinity champion isn't going to be ideal since he is a single hit, and one weak hit pretty much renders him useless against that champion is you really want to one-shot them if you are going first. So another big point is with a champion like Saito, and I haven't showed his mastery, so let me do that very quickly. Rolling back down to our spotlight champion here. He is using Helm Smasher. Obviously, if you're going to use him for clan boss, you want to use him with War Master, which I did. Kalari had a Bat Eater run, which is double Man Eater, Pain Keeper, Seeker, and a Bellinor. So I decided to make the speed of Saito equivalent to that of Bellinor. I really wasn't expecting a lot because the team was built around having Bellinor's crit aura. And when we replace it with someone like Saito, it's only attack and dungeon. So there's literally no use for his aura in that team. But I was curious to see how viable having a 50 up to a 60% chance of that defense down on the A1 with the extra hit in War Master and what he could do. Now I was about expecting very close to 1 million damage per turn. Now the problem here is I didn't want to take the gear off of his Bellinor just to put it on this champion. However, Relentless Gear would increase the value of this champion but significantly since he's a raw damage dealer and he does no poisons. So now I can show you this picture actually surprised myself by doing 56 million damage with the team built based on having Bellinor. So Painkeeper, Seeker, and both the Man Eaters were both suboptimally geared for having a Saito, which leads me to believe that according to my calculation, you could probably get 63 to 64 million damage out of Saito in a normal team composition like this if you gear all of the other champions properly and you put Saito in Relentless Gear since he does hit extremely hard. I believe the highest hit we did see against the clan boss was 386,000 damage. That's definitely more than Dracomorph's A1 can hit for, and it's around the highest I've seen my Septimus hit for in a clan boss scenario, and that is enemy max health based. So Saito is probably one of the hardest hitting single target champions that I've seen in the clan boss based on how much ignore defense he has built into his kit plus some of the gear that he was wearing. So he's definitely viable for clan boss. The good news about Saito is he does have very healthy base defense. We see 1,178. So he does have a very strong edge there as far as his capabilities for a clan boss team. Now his attack isn't too high, so that is slightly concerning. 
If his attack was at about 1500, 1600, he would probably be too strong based on his multipliers. However, if you want to use this raw damage dealer as a semi-consistent defense down, unless you're using him in a counter-attack team, then he would definitely be a sufficient defense down champion for you. But as we saw from that unkillable run, he does a lot of damage and can be viable in any unkillable setting. Alright guys, that is it for my video today. What do you guys think about the Beast Saito? I'm looking for your feedback. He looks sweet. And if you haven't seen it already, there is a video on who they actually modeled the character we see in-game after. It's a pretty cool YouTube video, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. I thought it was interesting to watch him skydive and kind of the whole story around them making this champion even though it did take close to a year and a half for them to actually release it it was still a pretty cool story i want to give a huge shout out to Kalari for letting me use his account he's definitely one of our better free to play players in the entire clan so huge shout out to him thanks a bunch for letting me use your account i had a lot of fun you definitely have quite a bit of gear farming to do as we saw in the video, and since you do have 14,000 gems, you should probably get on that as soon as possible. As always, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my next video, and I will see you all in the next upload.